Okay, so I'm going to show you dividing a decimal by a decimal using partial quotients. You'll remember partial quotients from back when we used it for dividing whole numbers. Um, the, it's very similar for dividing decimals, and the nice thing about it is that you don't have to know exactly how many times your divisor goes into your dividend. It allows you to guess and check, which is another name for this strategy. So the first thing I'm going to ask myself, I always say start with very easy numbers. Do I have at least one group of three-tenths in one and seventy-four hundredths? Well, yes, I know I have at least one because I see here I have seven-tenths. So, of course, I have at least three. So, I'm going to multiply by one because that's nice and easy. So, one times three-tenths is three-tenths, and I subtract. Four minus zero and seven-tenths minus three-tenths is four-tenths. One, ten one whole minus nothing. So I have one and forty-four hundredths left. And I ask myself, do I have at least one group of three-tenths in one and forty-four hundredths? Yes, I do. And I, because I'm thinking math, know that I have at least two for sure, because two groups of three-tenths would just be six-tenths. That's very easy to do in my head. So I'm going to multiply by two whole. So three-tenths, two times, is six-tenths. Subtract. Four hundredths minus zero is four hundredths. Now here I can do the crossing out and the regrouping, but I'm thinking math and I know that this would just end up being fourteen minus fourteen tenths minus six tenths, which would give me eight. So now I'm left with eighty four hundredths and I ask myself, do I have at least well I know that I have at least two groups of three tenths because that would give me six tenths and I do have at least six tenths left. So I multiply by two whole, and I subtract, four hundredths minus zero, eight tenths minus six tenths, I'm left with twenty-four hundredths. Now here's the part where a lot of students start to get confused because they ask them, they know, oh well I don't have at least one group. So one thing to think about is, think about what you did up here is I know that when I did one group of three tenths or three tenths times one, I got thirty hundredths. Do I have half of that? If I multiplied by a half, which in decimal form, one of our benchmark decimals, is that one half equals five tenths, like that, is yes, I do have at least half. Half of thirty hundredths would be fifteen hundredths, and I do have at least fifteen hundredths. There's different ways you could have done this, but that's what I thought of first. So when I subtract, I would need to regroup. 14 minus 5 is 9, 1 minus 1 is 0, so I'm left right now with 9 hundredths. Can't ignore these decimals here. So now I'm going to think about the rules of 10 that we've learned, um, powers of 10. And I know that 3 times something, 3 tenths times something can give me 9 hundredths. Well, I know that 3 tenths times 3 whole wouldn't work because that would give me 9 tenths. So I don't want to do times 3 whole. But if I did times 3 tenths, I do know, and I'm going to just show in some side work here, back when we did converting decimals to fractions, that any time you do a tenth times a tenth, you always end up with a hundredth. Nine hundredths right here. So um, I know that if I multiply 3 tenths times another 3 tenths, I would get 9 hundredths. So I know that's what I need to multiply by. 3 tenths times 3 tenths is 9 hundredths. I subtract, and I have nothing left. My answer is right here. So I have two whole and another whole, so I have five whole. And right here I have 5 tenths and 3 tenths, which is 8 tenths. There's my answer. Write it up here. 5 and 8 tenths.